Hello, welcome to electronicsfix.com. Today we will be going over the IR6000 and um, how to modify the lower probe. This is the lower probe, the top unit's off um, with the top cover on. Um, typically these units arrive with a probe for the bottom heater down inside next to the plate. Um, obviously the problem with that is when the plate heats up it's going to shut off prematurely because your board is always located much higher. So what we're going to do is cover how to modify that probe, bring it up near the board um, for any rework station, and this goes for hot air, IR, or any machine. The ideal location of your probe would be about a quarter inch below your board. And um, what I mean is a quarter inch below your board as per, you know, racked and placed ready to go. So let me show you what that would be. If this is your rack and your board is being on, on that, then you'd be looking at you'd be looking at a distance of about that far um, away from the plate. So having your probe, if your board's located here and your probe is obviously uh, almost two inches below the board, when that lower area gets to 180 degrees Celsius, your board is still not anywhere close to that. So as this machine is maintaining a bottom heat of 180, your board will never absorb enough heat to get to 180, and that's a problem because when you're liquefying side or underneath a large size chip you can't melt it if your board's not preheated properly so we have other videos on how to preheat and why IR and hot air have different differences um, this is just going to cover the IR6000 and how to make it work better the biggest problem is this probe because this probe is nowhere near the board and um, by moving that you can actually make your machine work a lot better now you might you might wonder why is the probe down there to begin with why would you why would you modify a a perfectly good Chinese manufactured machine. Um, there, there's no way you can run, you know, when you, when you run your upper heater, obviously you're probing your chip. Well, by probing your plate, you're never going to get an accurate measurement. Now, can I make this preheat my board properly? Yes, I can because I can set my temperature on my lower controller higher, which will actually bring my board up. But my probe is going to read 220, my board might read 160, and there's a big difference there. And what we want to do is we want to make your machine as easy to use and as effective to use as possible. A stock IR6000 is going to fix about 7 out of 10 boards and that's if you know what you're doing. What we want to do is we want to strive for 9 or 10 out of 10 boards because we don't want to have customers that you can't repair their stuff. Uh, which also costs you money. When you look at how much loss you have uh, in billing, it's obviously a large amount by the end of the year. So, get, moving forward, um, this is the IR6000. Uh, your probe is right here underneath this grid. We're going to take this grid off. Um, your probe is then wired so that it goes down below the below the machine with your bottom plate off. You can see your probe is actually um, you know, this this part isn't even attached properly, but this probe is located and wired into your lower heater controller. Um, there's two ways to do this. One is you can replace this probe altogether with an aftermarket probe. The other way is you can just remount this probe. Uh, properly so that it's in the right spot. This probe actually isn't too bad and um, we're going to move this probe and check it. I think this probe has enough sl enough slack uh, and it's somewhat rigid so it'll actually hold its position well which is what we're also looking for. So what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to install that probe in a better position. So with the grate on our probe goes here so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the grate a little bit there and we're going to do that by cutting an opening. We're going to cut an opening in our screen so we can lift that probe up and out out of the screen. So we're going to mark our spot, make a small cut in this area here. Um, we only need a small amount of room, but we're going to go two, two notches wide, which should give us plenty of reach. Okay, so we have a small hole there, and um, we also have a nice little uh, screw to attach to, which is going to be nice because our, our grid sits out here, our rack support sits out here, so we're going to want to pull through and actually maybe give it a little reinforcement. Um, there's two types of reinforcements we use. One is this, you bend this into the proper position. I think with this machine being the size it is, this rigid copper is going to do the trick. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get some more slack. So we're going to cut away this, this band that they're holding it in place with. We're going to basically reposition this to give us enough slack, which is right about there. And then we're going to re-strap it in place. A 
I'm not totally convinced that a uh, tie strap is the best thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to move it a little further out on this rail so that it actually can't get in where it was, which is right against the, the heating element. And we're going to need about that much slack, so we're just going to put that on there. We're not going to crank that down too tight. We just want to keep a little of the tension on it. And then we're going to put this back on, except we're going to insert through the hole that we made like this. So now we have a probe that actually comes up out of that lower area. So now the big big thing would be get it bent similar to that so that it's up tight to the board and we can do our job the way we need to. We're going to see if we have our proper Allen screws here. All right, so now we're going to loosen this Allen screw. And they have, they have that into a nut on the bottom, which is not ideal, but it should be the right threading. Um, this is going to be a little, a little short, I think. So rather, now nah, that should be big enough. So we're going to attach this, which is just some, uh, some heavy gauge crafting wire which will give us support plus it doesn't melt so you only want to use stuff that will not um, will be able to handle that kind of heat so now that we got that on there we're going to lug that down tight your outer screws are actually um, fit right into the metal plate so they might be an easier choice for you but this should work Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna I'm probably gonna change that screw out to something with a bigger a bigger head. This might be this might be angled too. Yeah, this one has an angled a bevel head on it, so we're gonna change that nut out with a better one. Make sure we got the right threading. Alright, so this one does not have the, this is a little bit bigger. I'm going to see if we have something here that will fit that a little better. Alright, so we got a little bit nicer flat head on there. That should give us a better fit. Alright, so now with that in place, what we can do is we can actually get ourselves a nice reinforced fixture here simply by stranding that around with a rigid piece and then do a reverse loop on the end. Okay, so now we have a piece which is very flexible. We can adjust it to where we need to be. We can set it to the height of our board and we should be good to go. So that's basically it. If you had to remove that underneath, you'll see there's, there's the two lugs for your um, lower heater controller. You could actually just attach a new probe there and replace that all together but we're going to use this one since it's a pretty heavy duty solid piece and it should give us since it's above the IR plate it'll give us a good reading if we were doing something with a plate that was above us we would have to change that so we should be in pretty good shape Let me find the rest of our screws here. 